Well, we've got the tower lowered down to a horizontal position to work on it. We're loosening the blades from the old hub that's going to be replaced, and we're preparing to remove them. You take out a set screw there that builds loosening now, and then there's a longer bolt that goes all the way through it. And then the whole blade and its shaft that holds it to the hub will extract as one unit here. Okay. And now the blades are coming out. Now they recommend that I see these on the new ones, but we've never had to put it on yet. And this is all the harder they ever come out, is about like that. I wonder if I need to let that turn and I'll just hold this. I don't know if the whole hub needs to turn. Or... I don't know. Hey, we had to borrow a pipe wrench for a job at Wine Guards and I think it had a six foot handle on it. We built that one when we were looking at 400 to Yeah. And it was all I could do to pick up the wrench. <laughs> it wasn't aluminum? Well, there's nine. 10 millimeter bolts here to get loose, and we're using a 17 millimeter socket on this particular unit to get them loose. I'm going to kind of loosen them all first to see what moves. I don't have one tight one at the very end. Back them all off about a sixteenth of an inch. Never done this before, so I guess we're learning a little bit. Next step, take off the nut and take out the... Oh, well, will that pull down first or we're going to need to... We pulled it most of the way just no, I don't by hand. Think, but I don't know... You... We're putting a puller on it because the magnets seem to want to pull the rotor hub back up into the... We're going to get them all the way snugged up there. Where's your wrench? Just to make sure we don't pull the thread loose. Just when it comes, when it breaks this magnetic pull, what's it going to do? That's a good question. We'll go right down your toes. Yeah, the three of us holding the machine. You, why don't you turn that wheel? you got gloves on. I'm ruining my hand there. I put them on because I've ruined mine trying to start a John Deere race. And yeah, here's <laughs> all kind of blister off on it. Here's all the magnets. There she comes. Here she inside comes. Inside of this yellow colored thing. What were you trying to start? An uh, old John Deere B tractor. So oh. I will start. Yeah. Do we have to mark anything about where it goes back in? No, this rotates constantly. Well, we get a different hub. <laughs> That's that, why I was wondering whether that was supposed to come there. apart. Okay, well, apparently. And that'll be shipped back to the company. And we'll take a look up in here. See what... And that yellow color means it's uh, one of the uh, Cadillac versions of the turbine. I'm only kidding. <laughs> and I'm turning the shaft and the bearings feel excellent. There's no in play, there's no side to side play noted. The wiring harness looks excellent in there. No chafing of the wires. The seals are good. So everything inside here still looks good to me. Oh. Right now I'm cleaning off the old anises from the shaft and getting ready to put on new anises. What's the purpose so, of that? Well, anises is to prevent the uh, hub from galling to the shaft. So if you ever have to take it off again, it makes it a lot easier. We'll just clean the old off to just make everything nice and neat. And I'm looking, I'm looking at three right about here. Okay, we're giving them. You want to put the big nut on, or just as a safety, or I don't think I need. Did it. the uh, can you feel did the magnets key? draw it back up? Not yet. Oh, see, the magnets were already up. up oh, there. I see. Well, I mean, I thought it would suck it back up there. No, I think what it was is it was just stuck to it, it because it's uh, to it. the paint was stuck to it or something. Mm -hmm. That and it's um, recessed in there. Oh, was it a recess? That doesn't want to. Yeah. So you. Well, we've got the nine bolts around the outside that holds the hub to the, what I'm going to call the magnetic rotor pack, for lack of better knowledge. And uh, right now the three center ones are snugged up and the six other bolts are a little bit loose, two on each side of the center ones. And, and we're taking the electric brake off to... We got some drag and, and we got to check to make sure we don't have any drag on this. So we got to do some tightening and loosening. We may not have all these outside bolts tight enough yet because at the 30 foot pounds. Yeah. 
Okay, we've uh, just finished getting the hub most of the way installed. Bill's preparing to torque all nine bolts to the 30 foot pounds. Uh, he's going to do this one and I'm going to rotate it. What should it be? Free rotation? Yeah, there shouldn't be. Okay. Okay, now we're going to keep my hand on this so it comes back to the same place. But as I turn this, I don't feel, I was going to turn it one full revolution, Bill. I don't feel any drag. There's nothing in there that's rubbing, so I think we're in good shape. Okay, now turn it 30. 30 degrees. 120. Okay, now let me. Bill, what are you torquing it to? I pre torqued them to 20 foot pounds just to draw them up even. The center ones are already at the 30 foot pounds. But until you get that the balance of the other six torqued up, you can sense a little bit of drag. And we're, by putting everything at 20 foot pounds first, we kept it even and no drag. And now I went to the, finish it off at 30. Now I'm ready to, I'll hold it right there. I'm going to go back and get the remaining three to 30. And then I'll check them all one more time. Yeah, that one pulled up quite a bit more. After we got those other ones tightened up. Yep. I've got middle ones off its 30 foot pounds. It's not even tight now. So. Okay, let me, okay, now this is going to be the last one of them. and then I'm going to do around. the middle ones again. And then I'll go back and check them all again. So everything finally seated in there on that okay, magnet. Now I'm going to do the middle ones here. Yeah, the middle ones even loosen back up, okay? Part way. You can see how that one is really loose over there by you. In the middle, I think. This is really a critical part, isn't it? Yeah, this is, this is, you got to pay attention to this because that's what, this, this one here is a little stubborn, so I, I know it's, it might be the lock. That's, Remove the shrink wrap protectors and blades. We've done that. Leaving the shrink wrap cap on the end of the blade extension in place. Slide the blade tip onto the blade rod tip extending from the end of the inner blade. Align the holes in the blade rod with the holes in the blade tip. Can you push that in a little bit farther? There you go. Using a hammer, right, right there. the first spring pin provided into the hole furthest from the inner blade. All right, so we want the roll pins next in that uh, pin punch that you said came with it, Dennis. I'm using a drill bit to make the shaft line up with this while Keith drives the pin in there. It just kind of helps to make sure. So it doesn't mean that nothing right here has to be it, even. It's just the it whole all thing. rotates. It all rotates, and I when see. we adjust it with the governor later, that'll get this all to where that lines up right. So the lining up that hole is critical right there. Well, before you put the pins here. Right. In. Okay. So right okay. now we're ready to drive that down flush. Now let's look at the underside of him for a second, and how are we looking here? Oh, we're good. We're all the way through. Okay, we're all the way through. Flush the plastic. Flush on both sides. You want keys or you got keys? If you, Pretty good. I okay. If you I'd go ahead and put the second one in. Take you, I can take oh, that's all right. All right. Bye. Bye, Siri. Bye. Now, I did say to remove the shrink wrap and proceed to pound up two spring pins, but I don't know why. We couldn't do the pins angle on the shrink wrap. Okay. What do you recommend for the bracing here underneath, or uh, just something to keep so you don't put so the blade isn't flexing when you pound? Yeah, it. this is wider here than it is here, so unless you put something underneath of it, you're going to have a gap. And by putting something under there, it just gives some support, so we don't bend anything or bounce the blade too much. Yeah. All right. Exactly. We're going to double check that they're all through on the other side. We could come a little farther with those two. Yeah, we could. That's what the pin punch is for. Uh, apparently. Is that the one supplied? Yes. Okay, that's probably good. Yeah, you just kind of belts. Okay. Yep, that's about centered. Okay. Blade number one is done. No specific way to put the pin in as far as the entry? I mean, there's no up or down? or No. No, no. they're just standing. Okay. Now we'll set this one aside and get ready for a set. All right.